Denver, Colorado. Dave Collins of Buzz Oven, Weed Eater, Bongzilla, Sour Vane, Hail Hornet. Am I missing anybody? Barstool. Barstool. Um, that's a lot of bands, obviously. That keeps you, I'm sure, plenty busy. Do you ever have time to just, when you're back at home, Carolina, North Carolina, you, you have a job out there, or you have a business out there, I believe? And uh, now one of my best friends owns a business. <clears throat> is part owner of a chain of head shops. All right. You can say that here in Denver. Yeah, because we have. We can't a lot call of them that. We can't call them that there in North Carolina, but. We have to call them a tobacco shop out there. Yeah. The reuniting of uh, Buzz Oven, whether it's temporary or maybe it's going to end up to be like a full-time gig. I know you have all the other bands that you're in doing stuff, but how were you? Did Kirk just ask you to, hey man, we're, we we want to just do a short little tour here? Want to hit the road with us, or how did that come about? Well, uh, this day, you know, at this point, between all of us, pretty much, it's easier to just do short runs if we can. We're going to do a, some longer runs, but not like you know, seventy shows in seventy-two days. Like that shit really is taxing on you. Years ago, Buzz Oven did shows like that or more, and I have to with Weed Eater. It's hard to do, but at the same time, I don't know. Nobody really, you know, we, we get itchy to get right back out as soon as we get home anyway. Yeah. But uh, we're going to be very busy in the beginning of the year, so between all the bands, that, or Weed Eater and Buzz Oven anyway. speed it's just I don't know it separates the band from they're kind of locked in this building you know anyway when you when you're in the studio but I've never like stayed on site and God luck we didn't do that we went across town and we still were very happy with the record but we saw the bunks and all the rooms that Steve has for the bands to stay in and it's relatively inexpensive it makes sense to go ahead and pay for those too which are cheap if you're already recording in there. It's an awesome place to stay. So we just stayed there the whole week. So and all night long you can write shit and jam. And just do it's, it. It's great. It's a great, the whole thing. EA, Electrical Audio, is a badass place to re record at because of all that, if you take advantage of all that they have to offer. Right. And March 1st is scheduled to release, release date of Jason the Dragon, is that correct? Hopefully get out by March. <clears throat> Awesome. Is it? That's what right. I got. I got I've been out. I've been out playing some shows with Buzz Oven and been cut off from society other than the people that come to the shows. So I have okay. no idea. March first, they say. Huh? It says March first. Yeah. Great. Right. Yeah. Is there anything that's going to be different from Jason the Dragon that we haven't heard um, on the previous albums, or is it going to be, you know, keeping with the same, same kind of sound as your? I think it's God Luck and Good Speed is going to be kind of along the lines of that sound, or is there going to be anything that we haven't heard before from, from Weed Eater? <clears throat> I, think you, I think you'll hear different things that you haven't heard before, hopefully. Yeah. But, whatever. Since I don't make money at this, I really just play it for me and hope people like it. If they don't, it doesn't matter. Well, we did a couple of the tracks on the new Weed Eater record, and the last one, our we're done at home, you know. I, I did, you know, there's a Hawaiian-ish luau song on the new record that I did on lap steel and uh, acoustic bass and vocal and uh, old Baldwin organ, double decker organ. And I did that all in my house when I was laid up in the house from this accident that I had with my foot. I was on a bunch of pain medication, so it turned out to sound like a freaking luau song. I put it on the record just for the fuck of it. I hope people like it. And if you see the mindset that I was in whenever I did it, uh, you 
didn't understand it for sure. Um, and that was all unrecorded. And when we get to the studio with Albini, which costs a lot of money, even though it's a great studio, you know, it's the best place I've ever recorded, if not one of them. It's definitely in the top two. And uh, it pretty much got dumped straight to tape from the thing that I did at home. I'm like, damn, it costs a lot of money to do this, but we didn't even really affect it or do anything to it. That was all done in mastering to make the levels the same, you know, that was later. Right. It makes you wonder, but there's nothing, you can't beat the fucking analog, the big analog tape for heavy sound. Like, that works because of the type of song that it was. It's an acoustic song, basically. Like, the track uh, alone that was on God Loving Good Speed was recorded on a four, old school Tascam four track. And it's four tracks. And we dumped that to tape with Albini too, and the same thing. Right. But to try and record heavy shit on a four track like that is it's undoable to have the clarity and everything that you need to make it right. So that you can hear what the fuck it is. I guess. Before this tour, when were the last Buzz Oven shows? Do you remember when that was? Before this tour? Yeah. Oh, man, I remember that. I can't believe it. I don't know why I can't remember that. It's probably something uh, quite a while, 10 years ago, I'm, I'm guessing, at least. 1998 or 99. Yeah, okay. So more than that, 12 years before we played these first shows. Are you getting a lot of fans coming out to remember you from back then? A lot of old schoolers? Or are you getting some We are. Ones? We also get a lot of people that, um, you know, I guess it sucks to think of it like retro or coming back, but a lot of, when you take that long of a period, you know, that long off, I guess a lot of people didn't get to see you that might have gotten into it by then. And we'll, travel distances and actually make it a point to see you instead of just kind of accidentally coming to your show. Just stumbling, uh, stumbling upon yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. People that mean, at least there are people that mean to be there, you know, so. I understand you play a lot of different instruments. Uh, what was your first instrument that you picked up and about how old were you? Uh, I guess the very first thing that I ever played was the piano. Uh, Dad got a piano so my sisters could have piano lessons. And they didn't want to take them, but he forced them to take them. I liked the piano and was playing with it more than they were. And now it's mine. Right. My mom gave it to me. It's an old school player piano upright. It's killer. You can pedal it, it'll play songs for you by itself with the old school paper scroll. Yeah. Do you notice the crowds in the South being a little different than even compared to Denver or the West Coast? Is it more intense or generally people the same? Are the crowds pretty much the same and the turnout down South? Or is, it, is, is there any differences you, you really see? From a, lot of people, a lot of people don't have money in the South, you know? Never have, so that's the only difference still come out if they can and when they do their quality it's quality not quantity obviously your voice was how I've heard you talk about in the past being a little raspy kind of catching up to you kind of hurting after a while and when, when, you're, when you're singing with weed eater do you do you have any problems with that to where you almost can't go on for a show if there's too many shows or back to back shows on long tours or are you able to get by is your voice do you drink anything special to stay you know, to keep it going, other than, you know. That's a good question. I drink a lot of whiskey, um, just because I like it. But my father did too, and he had the same voice as me. Not a lot of the habits that I, that I have. But I started sounding, I had this voice when I was a little bitty kid, you know. I was like under 100 pounds, and my voice dropped and sounded like this. It was really weird. Hmm. So, I do drink NyQuil on stage on occasion with weed eater after days on end of screaming like crazy. 
Yeah. It wears on me, but it, it's not an issue with Buzz Oven because I've only seen some backups in one song that I sing the whole way through. So. Do you feel that you have to pick up a computer almost to, to you know, communicate with fans, or can you get by with uh, just the old school, just the way it used to be, without any of the communications, without you, you know, it, Facebook, MySpace, Internet, uh, what have you? Is it, are you able just to? Did you feel like, man, I gotta spend more time and, and, and I get? I feel more? like I should, but uh, I can't do that. I've been doing this a long time. I used to book entire tours on pay phones. You can't even find a fucking payphone that works anymore in any major city. No. Nope. It'll be broken to pieces if it's even there. Nobody has that shit anymore. You know, we book shows with no cell phones. Yeah. So I have a computer that I bought. I don't know why I did. But actually, I have approved like art files and shit for records on it. Like the new We Need a Record. That's the only thing I've used it for. You know, I don't email people at all. And uh, somebody set me up on Facebook that I've never, I've only checked twice since that was three or four years ago. I have a cell phone, I'll text and talk to people all the time, but it's been dead at the beginning of this tour. I forgot to pay it. And we haven't had time to go to pay it, and I can't call it in yeah. because it's several or whatever. That's what it is. I don't even have I don't even have a phone right now. On. Sometimes. I'll be home tomorrow. I think I fly in at midnight, and the next morning I'll go get my phone and turn back on. some point uh, if Bongzilla needed me to play on a record for them I would surely do it they're very good friends of mine and my brothers I would hope that it would be able you know, that, that they could work it out that Cooter Brown could do it the guy that was playing bass before I mean I only played on the last record and a couple of tours that we did right one short tour uh, of the East Coast and one full US with Monster Magnet but uh if Cooter Brown couldn't do it, then uh, I would definitely do it for him if they needed me to do it. Yeah. That's all I know about it, really. I hear it. Their other band, uh, Aqualonia, I think is the name of the band. It's just, well, it's just Magma and Pee Wee. Okay. And then Spanky, the other guitar player for Bongzilla, is jamming on his own as a professional truck driver. Keep the hammer down, Spanky. <laughs> so, he tours more than I do, like pulling around TVs and sh shit like that. He's all over the place. Uh, yeah, with the 18 wheeler is yeah. perfect for, for some dude that was in a touring band that drove him around all the time. You know? Yeah. Gets on the road with that. So, I don't know what they're up to other than that. Yeah, uh, speaking of your foot, is it all right now? It's been a while. Has it has everything healed? And yeah, it'll are you... be a, it'll be a, a year, January 9th, and it's I don't know what is it, the nineteenth of December or something. Like that. Yeah, almost a year. Almost a year. But it, it's all good now. You don't have to. I know when it when you toured in Denver last, it wasn't very long after that had happened. So you're probably in quite a bit of pain, I'm sure, still. Yeah, it was at that point. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they said I'd be on crutches for three or four months and on a cane possibly for a year, maybe a little less. And I think I was on the crutches for two weeks and the cane for three weeks. Right. And that was about the end of it here. I think we had just done South by Southwest. Okay, Texas. I know I had the cane, yeah, awesome. I I had the cane there because it was a pain in the ass. There's a million fucking people down there. and Trying to get through everybody. and. Yeah, I got stepped on a lot. It sucked. <laughs> it's the last thing you want to happen. I started just hitting people in the legs, back of the legs with the cane. <laughs> Get out of the way. Yeah. Which worked, worked pretty well, actually. You know, we were talking previously about the dispensaries. I just wanted to bring this up real quick since you're kind of in a 
related line of work. Denver, or Colorado's kind of leading the way. I'm stoned. <laughs> Shit. Well, Colorado's kind of leading the way when it comes to open up dispensaries and, and almost almost to where it's legalized. And pretty much is, I mean. In smaller areas, especially like this area, it's more concentrated than it would than it is in you know Southern California, it is. Right. Which is pretty concentrated. And then Northern California, you know, around the Bay Area, Amsterdam, whatever. There's a lot of them, but not still. Per capita, you definitely have more than all of them put together, probably. Do you think North Carolina is ever going to come close to what we have here? It would be awesome if they did. What's up, Ramsey? Hey. How are you doing? Yeah. One shot of bourbon? <laughs> all right, man. Thanks a lot for taking the time out. I appreciate it. And I'll see you up there. Yes, sir. Yeah.